the word of God, and I know that it's true. Amen? Amen. And it never changes. What are you trying to, don't tell me this thing's changed. It's the same. God's instruction for man. Has man, oh, well, that's a little one. Has man actually changed at all? No. No. no, we got more gadgets than we got more. But they're still the same old rotten rascals they always were. Same, same. Men in the time of Jesus are just like men now. And before Jesus, just like men now. Time of Noah, just like men now. Our mankind, let's say, let's throw women in there. We don't want to miss them. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about one of the called, elect, chosen, and ordained people of the Old Testament, David. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to be on David in a certain instance. And you've probably heard this preached a lot of times, but I hope I can bring some new insight to it. And if you'll tell the, the book of 1 Samuel, the chapter 17. And I think we all face situations like this. Hallelujah. We all face situations like this. Verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies to battle and gathered together at Shachoth, which belonged to Judah and pitched between Shachoth and Amakin in Ephraim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Els and set battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side and there was a valley between them. And there was a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath whose height was six cubits and a span, approximately nine feet, nine inches tall. Approximately nine feet, nine inches tall. And that would have been if he was the common cubit, if it was the royal cubit, every cubit would be two feet, almost two feet, 23 and almost two feet. But six, and that'd make him 12 feet tall. So he's somewhere between 10 and 12 feet tall. This is one big rascal. Amen? Now, Israel is upon this mountain. You've got the army there. You're surrounded. And you're on a mountaintop. We all have spiritual mountaintops. We all have the time that the Holy Ghost is around us. The goosebump is so good, we think we could just whoop anything. Amen? They're riding on the mountaintop. The mountaintop experiences are very good. They're very good. They feel good. Amen? But the thing about a mountaintop experience is it doesn't take any faith to ride on the mountain. You're surrounded by the glory of God, and it does not take a great deal of faith to be up on the mountain. Hallelujah. And we would like to stay up on the mountain. Amen? But here we look across the mountain, and on the other side is a big old giant and the army of the enemy. And, and we have things, and if the church has things it needs to do, this church needs to go out and start reaching out more. And we reach out, somebody out of the bunch might get saved or get in the process of being saved, get started on the right track. Amen? So there's this big old army of the enemy on the other side. Amen? And old Goliath, he threatens. He says, anybody up on that mountain, come on down here and fight with me. You want to stay on the mountain. It's comfortable on the mountain. You're surrounded by your armies. Uh, you got the goose bump and, and they sing the praise song and, and you're happy up on the mountain and, and nothing's affecting you and you're not being wounded and you're not being up, beat up and you got no chance of, of being wounded or injured, amen? You're staying on the mountain. How many like the mountain? Raise your hand. We like the mountain. You like the mountain, Amen. Trouble is, if you stay on the mountain long enough, you start to get fearful of getting off the mountain. You're afraid of what happened when you come down. You can't stay up there forever. You can't stay in one spot in your Christian life forever. If you don't move, you're going to go backwards. 
You got to be moving forward in greater knowledge and glory and blessing in Christ. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. The brass. And our, a helmet of judgment. He is going to judge you, that it giant was. That's what brass is. Judgment. He's going to get you. And a coat of mail, and the weight of coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had graves of brass upon his legs and target of brass between his shoulders. And the shaft of the spear like a weaver's beam in his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Iron. I'm going to teach you some stuff in the Old Testament. Iron represents punishment. He is going to judge you guilty, the giant is, with his head, and he's going to punish you with a sword. See, see the swords? I could go get one of them waving around a bit, but hey, get a sword of iron. He's going to judge you, and he's going to judge you guilty, and he's going to cut you down. So you don't want to come off the mountain. You got judgment and punishment facing you in the hand of the giant. And he's big. And he stood out into the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you coming out to my your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and your servant of Saul? Choose you a man from you and let him come down to me. To be able to fight with me and kill me, that he will be your servant. If I prevail against him and I will kill him, then ye shall be my servants. So we're going to have a battle between two champions to determine... You know, not a bad idea. It shortened up the war, wasn't it? <laughs> Two champions, like the fight league, <laughs> see who wins. Amen? And when Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. My gosh, there's a giant up there with judgment and punishment for us. How can we face him? Let's not leave the mountain. Let's stay up here. We'll just camp. I'm afraid that the church of God that is supposed to be doing a work in this country today is camping on a mountain. They've set down their pegs and put up their stakes. They're sitting around the campfire, roasting weenies, making s'mores. And not going to go see the giant. Well, let's just stay here. Well, if I go, there's giants in every one of our lives. There's, there are giants. There, a lot of us have a giant. We just don't want to talk to anybody about Jesus. That's a, that's a simple fact. You're afraid to say something about Jesus. Amen. I don't care. what. See, one thing you got to do is get to where you, they, you don't care what people think of you. They don't care at all. Because if you worry about what people think of you, you're going to be controlled by people. You worry about what God thinks of you, then you're going to be controlled by God. Yeah. I just plain don't give a hoot. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say that other word. I know. I got where I don't care. And the Philistine said, verse 10, I will defile the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that will, might fight. And Saul and all of Israel heard these words of the Philistine, and they dismayed and were greatly afraid. Now, Saul was over seven foot tall. He was the biggest one that they had. He was their giant. In fact, if he was, uh, if his measurement was by royal cubit, he'd been over eight foot tall. I'm, Someday I'll explain the difference between the common cubit here to there and the royal cubit. It was 23, almost two foot. The ark was built by the royal cubit. Oh, I'm not going to go there. It's too much. Too much. The pyramid was built by them. I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the royal cubit. But anyway, these guys is big. And their biggest guy is a, is a chicken, Brother John. The big guy is a chicken. I'm not going to go face that giant. He's got judgment on his head and punishment in his hand, and I'm not going. Whole army of Israel standing there. 
well, come on, Saul, you're the king. We nominated you. We elected you. We did the straw poll and brought you in. Hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> not me. <laughs> That's a big one. I'm not going. He got big iron sword. Helmet of brass. Great big giant shield. A staff that's the size of a weaver's beam. Huge, big spear. He'll gut me and claim me. I ain't going. And he said, anybody else here want to go? And they all said, no. You see, they would have had to get off the mountain. Because they were going to meet the giant down in the valley. They're going to have to get down in the mountain. They're going to have to meet the giant down in the valley. When you come off the mountain, you end up down in the valley. And then when you get down in the valley, and you're in the spiritual valley, every giant gets to looking bigger. They, they, they start looking really big. Elijah, seen a giant coming, a spiritual giant. Jezebel, he went and got in the cave, tried to hide out in the cave because he was below the valley. He was down in the ground. If you can't face the giant when on the mountain, how are you going to meet him in the valley? If you don't have enough faith to say, I have a God who is well able to overcome this giant, as Joshua said when they seen him in the promised land, But if you look at yourself as a grasshopper, that's what it says in, that's what it says in, in, the, in the 13th chapter of Numbers. It didn't say that they were the size of grasshoppers. It looked as they looked at themselves as the size of a grasshopper. In other words, if you look at yourself as a little bitty thing that cannot do anything from God, you're just going to be an ant. In your eyes. The giant might see you. He might recognize that you are endued with power on high and the Holy Ghost is inside of you. And all principality and power and every force that there is in the universe is under the authority of Jesus Christ and you are in him. You are a part of his church. But if in your eyes you are nothing but a grasshopper and if you won't come off the mountain, The giant will just continue to taunt you. And David was son of the Ephraimite of Bethlehem, Judea, whose name was Jess. And he had eight sons of the man went among them, men of the old men of the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jess went and followed Saul to the battle. The names of his sons were, went to battle with Elam. And next was Abram, third Shema, I can really say these names. David was the youngest of the three eldest. David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned to Saul to feed, from Saul to feed his sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near the morning and evening, presented himself forty days. And Jace said to David, his son, Take now thy brethren an ephod of parched corn, ten loaves, and 150 weenies and go and feed them at their campfire. David was going to take them, the hot dogs and the s'mores, so they could continue to eat and have a party. I'm going to get this in language you'll understand. You'll never forget this. David is carrying a bag of weenies and s'mores. Well, parched corn, well, that was good. You ever eat parched corn? That's good stuff. That's the same. Hey, well, I could say potato chips because parched corn is a lot like kind of a snacky like potato chips. Huh? No, parched corn is you take it and, and you roast it and it kind of half pops and it, except for they didn't have corn, so it had to be parched wheat because they didn't have corn. But it, that's right, they didn't have it. I get so, I am so doggone technical and so authentic in my thought of how they were that it drive you all crazy, but, but I want it to be right. Amen. So David's got the weenies, the tater chips, 
And he's headed out to see them. So they continue their party on the mountain because they want to camp on the mountain and be filled with all the goodness of God, but they don't want to go down in the valley and fight the giant because they're just going to camp. The church has been camping. They're on a camping expedition, and a camping expedition is fun, but sometimes you've got to get off the mountain and go down and face the trouble. Amen? Here comes this boy. He's a little freckle-faced boy. Looks like Dennis the Menace. He's one of the few. He's one of the few people in the Scripture that you can discern what his color was and what his hair color was. Most of them they don't tell you. But the Bible says, in the King James, it says David was ruddy. You take that back as far as you can get it, and they'll tell you he was red-haired and freckle-faced, or you see somebody, they call him ruddy. That's what David looked like. So you got a 13-year-old red-haired, freckle-faced boy. You learned something, didn't you? He's got a bag of 10 cheeses. So had Cheetos too. Under the cabinet of the thousand took thy brethren and take their pledge. And now Saul and they, all the men of Israel were in the valley of, after fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up. He, his dad thought they were fighting. They're up on the mountain. They went down. David rose up in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went and just as commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the, the fight and shouted of the battle. For Israel and Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of his keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. And he talked with them. Behold, there came up the champion of the Philistine, Goliath, by name, out of the armies of Philistine, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up surely to defeat Israel? And he came up, and it shall be... The man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And I'm going to just paraphrase from now on. I'm running out of time. And David said, I'm the man. He's nothing but a boy. He's a little bitty, red-haired, freckle-faced boy. Looks like Dennis the Menace. And you got somebody that's somewhere between 10 and 12 foot tall over there he's going to come up against. Saul says, if you're going, heaven forbid if you go over there and fight that giant, put on my armor. Use my stuff. David tried to put on the armor of Saul. He tried to put on something that didn't fit. Don't try and walk in the anointing and the principles of something that don't fit. You've got your own call from God, your own anointing, your own purpose, and you determine what that is in God, and you put it on and you wear it. Don't try and be a clone of John Hahn. You learn from him, but you're not going to carry my anointing. You're going to have to get your own anointing that God gave you. Mine won't work for you. My armor won't work. I can tell you how to build your armor and where to get it, but you got to get it for yourself. This Christian walk is a personal walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Your mama ain't going to save you and your daddy ain't going to save you. Only Jesus is going to save you. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Old David goes down there with what he knows. He goes down there with a sling and five stones. Oh, my God. Five stones. Now, five stones in the Old Testament are going to re represent the Pentateuch. Five. The first five books of the Bible. That's what they had mostly by then. They had the five books of the Bible that Moses had written them. It was the Word of God. The stones were the Word of God. In the New Testament, it represents the fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, 
evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And they should be steeped in the Word of God. It's all telling you that it's the Word of God. Okay? And he says, I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. I have whooped the bear. I got that 30-pound raccoon. He didn't get me. I whooped the big bear. I whooped the lion. I took this word of God and I pitched it at the bear and he fell and I pitched it at the lion and he fell and this Philistine giant won't be no bigger. He won't be no bigger. So old David, after he left the weenies and the Fritos and all the s'mores and all that stuff with them so they could stay back and eat and have a party, he walked down the hill slinging hands. And the giant, with the giant brass headgear and the brass mail all over it, there was judgment to David. Carrying the giant beam with the iron point and the sword and the iron point of punishment stood before David. He took that thing. <laughs> he swung that thing around his head and he just loosed one of those five stones, just one of the bucks of the word of God, and it hit that Philistine between the eyes. And it knocked him cuckoo. And he fell down just like John Enslinger did here this morning. Okay, now you listen to this. And David, this is the end. He went up there, and he grabbed that sword, that was intended for his punishment, and he cut off the giant's head. That which the enemy had intended to destroy you with, the iron that the enemy had to punish you with, the word of God will turn into a weapon to cut off his head. Hallelujah. Now this is a faith message. Amen? You might feel that you are an incapable small insignificant member of the kingdom of God. You might have thought that you were just too dirty. You'd done too many things in your past life that's forgiven. You might think I'm small of stature. I'm, I'm young in this thing. I, I haven't been educated very much. I don't know much. I just know that Jesus is able. You might be emotionally weak in your eyes you might think you are a grasshopper but a little red haired freckle faced boy showed us what we can do in God we can get out of the camp On the, on the weenie roast in the party that's up there and walk down into the valley and take the word of God and slay a giant and take the punishment he had for us and cut off his head. Or as Joshua said, we are well able. We are well able in Jesus Christ. This is a message to this church this morning. We are well able. We are well able to overcome the wiles of the enemy. Somebody told me the other day they got to go somebody to teach them about spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. This word of God. I am tired. The pseudo Pentecostals. I'm tired of charismaniacs. 
I'm tired of people that write books. They give their own thoughts, and they don't even look at the book that gives the entire instruction that you don't have no trouble understanding that thing. It'll tell you what to do, and you follow it, and the battle's won. The battle's won. This is okay. I, this thing's fun, huh? They, they want you, they, uh, you're going to win the battle by, by getting one of these things that says war on it, and you just keep swinging it. <laughs> give me a break. Hey, we're going to give you a spiritual warfare tape, and you're going to listen to that thing and, and dance around, and you're going to win the war. They're still on the doggone mountain. They don't want to come down and face the giant. They don't want to get dirty. They don't want to get insulted. They don't want to get persecuted. That's all that Bible talks about is getting insulted and persecuted for the name of Jesus. Not for your sake, but for his. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done. How many understand how to fight the devil now? Amen. Hallelujah. On TV, you got spiritual problems. You raise up. Like David rose up and realized that you have the power in Jesus Christ if you're really in him. If, if you are, oh, I'm hot today. If you are sitting in a pew, starting to smell, with not enough power in your spiritual life to defeat a nap, Get out of that mess and get to where the Word of God is preached and the truth of God is preached and where holiness is preached and the truth is preached and you'll be raised up to be a mighty warrior for Christ. Amen. Amen. For anyone who would like to get saved right now and turn away from your sin, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess you right now as Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. To contact us, please go to anchoredinfaith.org and click on Contact. Then fill out the form and click on the Submit button. Someone will then contact you within a short time. Social media video platforms carrying our programming can be found by clicking on TV. The latest episode can be viewed directly on our homepage at anchoredinfaith.org. Late breaking information will be posted on facebook.com slash AIFGC. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church.